Yeah. Now, what I suppose what held me together was, I don't know what it is about me, but I, I always like to see the good. And I don't know if that's been from a mum. I don't know what it is, but you put me in a situation, you put me in a place where the music's not that great. You put me with a group of people that would not see my group of people and I'd somehow make people laugh. And I, yeah. I don't know, it's just a fortunate not to have a trait like that, yeah? But I just think throughout the year, during them years, we're talking sport, rugby again. Um, yeah. So with rugby, like I said, I got picked up when I think it was about 11, 12 or something. Stayed with, with it all the way through. Outside of rugby, it's interesting because outside of rugby, no one, none of my friends, none of my family, no one in my family in the past has played rugby. I didn't know about rugby. rugby yeah, was yeah. Another thing for me. I was just like, Vinny's gone away and train for a you know what I mean and then come back so like for me yeah. it, was it was unusual like growing up with you it was unusual in like in the best way possible but yeah. it was just very abnormal like, yeah. yeah no one did it in school none of our friends did it we played footy you know what I mean I played footy I played basketball um, never rugby so I literally had two worlds I'd even lie in rugby uh, to, to all, the, all, all my white friends in rugby I would lie and say that I watched rugby they talk about yeah, yeah, yeah. these big games, these grand finals. Yeah. And I would say, I'd agree and say in this game, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't have Sky and stuff. Um, but even if I didn't have Sky, I didn't know anything about no rugby. So sport kept me kind of on a balance. When it got to uh, school, it's like, what do you do at the end of school? Yeah. And I decided to go to sixth form, like yourself, which was a shift in, it was finding me. This is where I feel like I really found myself. And um, when, I've, when I've got there, you know, you're mixing now with new friends. These friends yeah. who actually get me more, you know. And funnily enough, the mixed race are black. So yeah. you kind of, because you go through the same struggles, it's like a, a more of an instant connection. You're not necessarily going to get along with every mixed race and black person, because that's idiotic for me to say, but you have this sort of, like connection. Now I've got best white friends and I've got best black friends and mixed race friends. You know, but my closest friends are mixed race and black. Yeah. So, and actually uh, one of them, you know, I met in, um, met in college, you know, yeah. and then this is where the shift where of my friends from school kind of went the other way. And there was a lot of jealousy and envy during these times. It was a mad time. And I found my way and then, you know, Dressed a bit differently, I was a bit more confident. Different haircuts, because I grew my hair in school. Um, yeah. So you know, all these sort of things kind of I think molded me, and then since then, took it upon myself to think about myself. Do you know what I mean? Uh, and then rugby, I suppose, has, has has kept me together from sixteen, Luke, to now. I mean, sport was for me. What was for you? Um, education. Education. Yeah, because you've been in it for a minute, haven't you? You've, you've... Yeah, I've been in it for the rest of my life, yeah. And you've kind of flipped it as well, haven't you? Now you're actually in education for the right thing, like actually teaching. Well, not, well, yeah, I suppose teaching. Yeah, you could say that. Yeah, you? there'll be some teaching. Like, obviously, that's... I've, I've done some just formal teaching at our old secondary school and stuff in the past. But, yeah, at the moment, I'm, like, creating... It's great. I'm creating my own vision of what I think education should be. I've created a program for what that's like and now I'm starting to deliver that and it's around interestingly enough it's around um, a lot of it is around helping young people develop a sense of purpose but giving actual really guided steps there and looking at their individual personalities and seeing how they can use that as an advantage to do the things that they want to do and what they're best at and to fulfill their own personal needs mm. and then using that and giving some of the scaffolding to actually teach them how to think rather than just telling them what to think Mm. So yeah, like it's like in the context of the conversation, like it just it just reminds me of why it's so important because with with the work that I'm doing there, I'm doing that because I'm looking at the research of right, what is it young people at this time? What are they most focused on? What is the most impactful thing that you can do with a young person at this point? And that's why I've done my research and got to where I am. But it's like having these conversations. If we, I feel like if, if we'd been able to have these conversations like this for a start or on, on the, more, the wider scale that people are having these conversations at the moment, 
that's obviously that's something that would really help. But um, I think within education, there needs to be a way for people to be able to have these conversations. And like, I there's a lot that I'm doing at the moment with the Black Lives Matter movement that I'm doing as an individual, and the stuff that I'll do with my organisation as well. But with the work that I'm doing, it's very core to what it is to be a person. And so it touches on all of these things. And this just kind of like reinforces why it's so important. And I think that if we'd had some of this structure, been able to have these conversations with actual guidance from people we can see as mentors and stuff from a young yeah. age, it would have helped a lot. Like, oh God, if, if a 30 year old, if a, an older person came in specifically <laughs> black, um, and had these conversations and give me the confidence to say something. Oh, you know what? Not even, yeah, that as well. Or don't forget your parents. I've only, grew, I grew up with a, a white mum, and of course she encouraged me to find out about the culture, but ultimately I've not, I didn't have a, my black dad was in and out, but mostly out of my life. So in terms of heritage, in terms of what to expect and all these stories, because you know, my dad's 60s in his sixties. So, you know, he was born in St. Vincent's and that's where obviously why I was named Vincent, but he was born yeah. over there. So he's come over here. So he was an immigrant. So yeah. him, him coming over here in London, you know, it's going to be a horrific time. So having them conversations in school like when you're younger would be absolutely phenomenal. I, I think it would have been brilliant because as a black man, you're always going to have a black parent. Now, whether they choose to have those conversations, it's up to them, but they're also my black parents. Yeah. So there's that more of a connection. Like, there's certain conversations, right? And this is me being honest. I can never have with my mum. If she wants to say, yes, I understand, that's cool. But you will yeah. never really understand. Mm. You know? you'll, you, you'll never... And it's such a shame that, um, you know, in my circumstances, you know, there's an absent father but I don't what I want to get out of here by the way I want, what I want to say is I'm not looking for sympathy I'm not looking for oh boo hoo sort of thing let's have a hug I'm saying this to educate people on, on this is just basically our experiences that's it like I, I don't want to yeah. hug and I, I didn't know you went through that because I'll always go through it and I'm not looking for sympathy I'm just looking to show people that I'm just giving, because it's mixed race, because I'm specifically mixed race and you are, I'm only giving from my experience. But it could be, I'd love to get other people on there that have had a different experience with both parents. You know, what was their experience? Yeah, like? I'd, love, I'd love to have that. What you said earlier as well about um, mixed race people who would identify as white, mm. if their skin isn't white, because it's a really interesting one. So it's like, if we use me as an example, so I told you that obviously mixed race, white mum, black dad, grew up in hugely predominantly white area, even for England, um, went to a predominantly white college at Cambridge, even compared to other colleges at Cambridge or places. So I've always had that with my, with my education, with my culture, with my family, with my experience, pretty much mm. most of, pretty much all of my experience. Mm. And there would be ways in which I would act more in what would be called a white way. And then there'll be times when I acted more in what would be called black way, and then sometimes would be mixed. But I've never, like yourself, identified as white. And it's interesting that all of that experience of everything that we have and everything that we go through in terms of our family, our education, our culture, these like bed marks of what it is to be a person. And like mine have been predominantly white, and yet I would never identify is white and that's because the color of my skin isn't white so it's like i think that just kind of demonstrates just how deep it is just mm. how deep that perception of your skin color can be compared to all of those things compared and so i think it'd be great to have these conversations with mixed race people who are, who are who have got white skin that would be a good one yeah uh, people yeah, yeah. who are maybe like three quarters white a quarter black yeah, yeah. like um, how people feel in that respect like my, that's the case for, for my uh, younger siblings, my two sisters and my brother. Um, but yeah, like, I mean, do you know anyone who's kind of overcome that visual? I mean, that's the thing, actually. I've seen a couple of these people, like, in, in the news, and I've seen it when you've had someone who's been, who's been white in terms of how they look, 
and they've said that they identify as being black and then they've been like ridiculed like so it's like yeah do you think do you think there's anything that that is stronger than melanin and, and like your skin tone when it comes to it because it's that that perception of what we see on the exterior of someone in terms of the skin color it seems to out trump a lot of core fundamental things about what it is to be a person and who our, ident our identity is like I, i've always identified as being usually mixed race but then i've said black as well yeah. um like yourself so yeah do you think there's anything which is more powerful i guess for people generally than skin color when people identification i think more <clears throat> i think i think the most i think a more powerful would be experience um now it depending what era you are from right it depends on your experience so if we're talking about let's say for example 80s yeah don't forget mixed races now and i've had this conversation with before but mixed race now is a fashion it's fashionable yeah. it's actually fashionable to be mixed race for girls to mix mixed race for mixed race to date mixed race it's a fashionable thing now but if we yeah. go back you know 80s specifically you know if you was mixed race it was not a good look it was ne it's never no, been no. like that and no. if you were a white lady getting with a black man ridiculed i'm talking like these words i saw something on uh, it was like a social media post and um uh it was uh, a granger was it granger and you know some of the words that they've said it um there were a guy there were a young black guy um and he was upset and it was it was like oh why are you upset him and all oh, because they're calling me uh every name blah 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 and the white girl says oh well it's not your fault you're an ignog <laughs> you know and it's like mm -hmm. and this was on great so you know but you know years and years ago it, i know that particular person uh, a young boy is black but it was on that on that note just um I've, I've got a family member who I had a family member who mixed race and as a child, because they were mixed race, their mum was ashamed of them and would abuse them on the base of the colour of their skin because they'd had a baby with a black man. And yeah, this was this is like we're talking like eighties again. So yeah, there's like there's been a massive, massive shift. Like so what what do you think that shift tells us about like about how Racism's being challenged and about what it means to be a mixed race person, given that it, it has become, I'd say it's become easier. I don't know if racism on a whole has reduced. In some ways it has, in some ways so, it's actually got I worse. Think, yeah, I was about to say, I think we need to be specific in what we say it's been easy. That in your face, yeah. is, like we spoke about before, is it's a lot less now. If you compare it to the US, it's a lot less. But the actual system, prison, education, that's it's still at a dis disproportionate rate. We're still there. Yeah. We're still like that. Next couple of years we've got as well, with the health disparities that we've got with COVID, with the um, economic and employment differences that we've got with black and white people, these are going to grow in the next couple of years as well. Yeah. Well, they were set to grow. They were set to grow. That's what was going to happen, but mm. there's been I a think... lot of collective change and there's been a lot of collective like, power with this movement. Mm. And I think it's an essential time because coming out of this pandemic, like it's going to be hard. And I think something we've not mentioned as well is like, just like post Brexit, I feel like um, the in your face stuff, in a way, some of it is, in a way, some of it's like preferable. I mean, yeah, Malcolm, I know what you're saying. Malcolm X said it in quite an extreme he way. Does, he was talking just about the ring of Mr. X. What was that? No, oh, just about the ring of Mr. X. Yeah, go on, yeah, sorry. Okay. And it was talking, I mean, I don't agree with the generalizations that it was making, but I, I, I agree with the thrust of the argument. It was saying, like, basically, the more liberals are more like the, um, I can't remember, it's more like the fox. And then you've yeah. got the more conservatives who are, who are like the wolves. And basically, you're saying, like, with, with some of them, you know your enemy, you know the ones who hate you. And then with the others, it's more veiled and you're not really sure. Mm. And I think one of the good things about, explicit racism that's a sentence i didn't think i was going to start by saying before. <laughs> but listen i agree i think i know what you're about to say go on and one of the good things with what's happening now and when people are coming out and they're saying 
white lives matter, not just because white lives matter as they do, but because as a counter protest to us valuing black lives, one of the good things about that is like, it's good that we know who you are and where you are. We can engage with you in some sort of discussion. We can stay away from you if we need to. We can protect ourselves. We can try and grow. But when it's just all brushed under the table, which has well, happened for so long, and that's why this has come up so much, that's when it's difficult to challenge, and that's when yeah. it's difficult to act. And people don't think it's there, and it yeah, is people, there. Yeah, and you know, if thing is, if what, if what I always say is this: if white people don't seem to think it's there, then that means that's what, and again, that's just white. It's just white privilege. It's you don't think it's there because you've not, are not accepted. Unfortunately. You're in a position where the system education is is built for you. Do you know what I mean? So it's it's easier for you. But I think I forgot about the original thing that we're saying about. Um, I forgot what it was about. But it was how we brought it together. I'm not quite sure what it was. So again, were you going to bring up Malcolm? Yeah, yeah. It was just uh, about the the whole. No, no. Because you mentioned that about about you know if you know your enemy, then that that's better. It's it's and this is not an enemy thing, but if you know a person that's being racist, mm. i.e. you are a whatever, then it's like, okay, cool. But it's, it's the people in job roles and the positions of power, you know, that are, yeah. are pushing the buttons, basically. Mm. The guys that... about this. You're not sad about this, and what's difficult about this is when we talk about systemic racism, when we talk about unconscious biases, like the majority of people that we're talking about are good people. Like, these are really good people. Like, these are not these, like, and I think that's the problem because on this, like, when we talk about what values we have, growing up in 21st century Western, you know, Britain, like, equality is something that we value. And I think that genuinely people say that our spoken values are equality, but our active values are not quite that because we obviously show favoritism to certain people yeah. and the racial sort of disparity that we have. But it's like, I find it, it's a bit difficult because you've got, like, when we're talking about schools, and I've got so much respect for teachers. Like, they're doing incredible jobs. And I actually have a lot of respect for the police, like, despite what some of them do and despite the systemic racism within there and the very explicit racism that you see as well. I generally speaking have a lot of respect for most of these people. But it's like when you're part of a system and when you were brought up and you have certain narratives and you have a certain history, the way that our minds work we then become part of the problem and that's when we start to show forms of racism ourselves so i think one of the difficult things is that the majority of people are really great people they happen to be somewhat racist and i think that's a challenge because not everyone's it's not everyone it's not that explicit like britain first person that we've got as a caricature of, of a racist yeah. like that's perhaps someone who's more racist yeah but we've got a lot of people across the spectrum whatever spectrum we're talking about, mm. who are. And I think that's one of the challenges because you know, people don't believe that they're bad people. You know, you know, the thing is about, you made some great points there. And I recently, and I've been telling all my friends to read it as well, but Natives is a, is a brilliant book to read by a Carlo. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, now, the term good and bad person, right? It's a weird concept because... What we deem in, in our society is, if you are a good person, you can't be racist. If you're mm. a bad person, it's easy to say they're racist. Let's say the whole thing about Churchill, for example, was he racist? Yes. Did he do some great things? Absolutely. Yeah. But it's because he did all them. It trumps of, you know, about the two, three million in India that, that were starving. So it trumps that because he did such good things. So what I'm trying to say is, if you are deemed a really, really bad person, I mean, like, look, look, if like really bad, done nothing good, then you are that the racism, that's it, bum done. Do you know what I mean? But on the other yeah. side, it's a lot different, and it's weird that we say, yeah, but he did a lot though, didn't he? Yeah, he, he might have not liked black people. She might, she might have not liked black people or not liking it. She did a lot of things though, and it's just like, oh, oh. Just to bring in the theme of like why the, why we call this mixed as well. Like, it obviously had. It has like that, those two meanings. We've got the mixed race, but the other kind of thing which I which I find really interesting is that kind of rather than and it's literally called black and white thinking. Like the the book that I've, the book that a children's book that I published last year is literally a room 
that the children that a child goes into and it's the black and white room and when they go in all the color from everything fades everything's black and white all or nothing good or bad right or wrong and it just becomes this binary choice between these two things and that that's black and white thinking is the name for that and what people tend to do is they tend to perceive themselves as the white which is another unconscious thing that the white obviously is good it's just that's something that we've had haven't we throughout yeah. civilization but people see themselves and their group as the good and then see them the other groups as the bad and that's that black and white thinking mm. whereas it's obviously more of a spectrum it's that gray scale and i think that that's the problem when we're talking about figures like churchill and when we're having these conversations in general we either say oh someone's a racist so like donald trump he's a racist he's a bad mm. person he does nothing good he's just bad and then we have people like churchill or just other people everyone like our own family our own friends ourselves even um, we paint them as white, which is to say as good in that, in that conceptual sense. And I think one of the things that we need to have is more nuance with the way that we see people and the way that we say things. It's like when we're talking about Churchill, when we're talking about the Great British Empire, we need to talk about how much it was great in a good way. We need to talk about how much it was great in a bad way and be able to say that we can have both. And not that just by saying we need to talk about some of these bad things that happened, that we get rid of all of the good that happened. Mm. Like that's not what we want is it like we it's need not, to. you know i think and again it goes back to the education and i think mixed race or or someone that's not white in the uk when it comes to education about the british empire everything that was good was because of the bad but what you learn is yeah they did a bit of badness but look at all this great stuff and it trumps everything i think yeah. it's really important to show how nasty great britain was like we was like imperialism like we was nasty and we prospered we pretty much went to every single country and tried to do our thing do you know what i mean but yeah. i feel the like great, yeah, the great, yeah. yeah and i think lot. if the educate if the education changed and you was aware of all the good things that have happened not only in the uk not even not great britain but just in other countries, if we're talking about, you know, black people, let's talk about Africa before, because it wasn't just slavery. And I hate that. I hate it. Uh, oh, yeah, black people, slavery. Yeah. Although it's, a, although it's a, a, big, a big portion of our history, there's so many things that are before that. Do you know what I mean? And don't learn about it that much. You want to learn about, you know, just a little snippet to say like, oh, by the way, because the education that you have to find with my black culture, I've not learned that anywhere in school. That's been from... Um, family that's been from friends that's been going out i've had to actively go out and search for yeah things when that shouldn't be the case because you know you are a minority in this country but still there is a you know a lot of the community that not only black but of different heritage as well and i think education is definitely key which you're not going to get unless you go out and try and find it yourself you, you really are and as a mixed race person it's like well you know, my, my dad or mum's white, but my mum and dad is black. So, like, I know about my mum's side. I know about being white and, and you know, the education system and all that sort of stuff, because that's all you, yeah. that's all you see. What do I know about this side? I'll have to go out. And unfortunately, you know, mixed race people won't, it won't go out and find that side. And it, it breaks my heart when I hear, I've had conversations with, with, with other guys who know of mixed race people who've almost just, dis- I don't want anything to do with the, you know, the black side because it might be the absent dad, mom or dad, you know, or yeah, whatever, yeah. whatever the reason. And they don't want anything to do with them, Luke. And they don't even want to acknowledge, they almost, I've had, you know, black people that are afraid of mixed race black people. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, I'm genuinely afraid. Like, if you don't, like, don't want to be around black people. And it's, it, it, it saddens me because, you know, is it their fault? don't know. I think at a certain point, I think up to it's a certain be. point, it becomes a certain point where it becomes more and more your fault. I think when you're young... What age do you think that is, though? You're, yeah, you're given, you're given certain, like, a certain narrative, you're given certain images and these associations. I think that as a child, you've got some responsibility but your your environment is so much more and then as you grow up you, you have to take on more and more responsibilities so i think like as a as a kid not so much but when you're getting into your 20s you're an adult it's like you need to take responsibility for 
all aspects of your life. Mm. And that's something if you want to take responsibility for that, you should do. And I think once you get to your thirties, so much more so than your forties. But yeah, I mean, these, these are things which changes, which don't happen. And even with myself, like there's always been, and again, it's, it's been mainly through music and, and like, that's why I love music. Like for me, like it was like Nas and Tupac growing up. Like I just connected so much and learned DMX. so much. DMX. With anything else. Yeah. DMX and Luda. <laughs> but yeah, but the one who was part of talking about history and the culture, like that was, that was brilliant. But, and, and as well, like as well with, with the, with the great figures, it's like, okay. Yeah. Like read quite a bit of like, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, Marcus Garvey, do you know, stuff like that. And yeah, yeah. it's like, but what, what about British? Like I've not, there isn't been that much. And, and then, and then again, like when I've been doing stuff in like the business world and part of like the, I know you don't like the phrase, do you, babe? It, it, the, the, no, babe. It, it really angers me. I'm glad you've said it actually, because I, I actually, I was having this conversation before and I thought I'd write it down, but I actually forgot to write it down. But babe, you know what, for original, because I just don't feel like you can't put every, you can't put just, you can't come up with an acronym and then go, they're all together because they've all got, they've all got separate struggles of what they are. I don't think it's right to put them together. Now there is, in terms of content, like the, the way they're putting it together. I mean, if we're looking at Cambridge, this figure came out the other day, actually, that's all. I think it was Cambridge or Oxford or something like that. It said their BAME's quite high, BAME specifically, right? Yeah. Um, and in total, I think, and I might be quoting it wrong here, but it was in the low percentages, something like 2 or 3% of black people, but they're considered as BAME. So if they're at 13 14% of BAME, right, so they're going, well, it's fine then, yeah, we're all right. 11% was Asian, you know, whatever it is, but there was a small percentage of black people. So what I'm saying yeah. is you can't just go like that. You know what? If you're not white, then you just BAME. I just feel like, yeah. say what it is. If you're black, you're black. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You're Asian, you're Asian. You're not whatever. even more difficult with Asian. Like, um, when you try and look at the figures on these things, Bangladesh, around, Indian, it's, Indian it's, Pakistani, massive, massive differences massive between difference. Indian or whether you're Pakistani or Bangladeshi, African Caribbean, extrapolating that to a completely different continent. Yeah, I think that is a problem. But so yeah, well, basically, what I was going to say is like, oh, yeah. I've been there've been some sort of like um, BAME and uh, just general sort of like community sort of groups that I've been part of with the community work that I've done in Manchester yeah. and with sort of in, like in business as well. And it's been really interesting when I've actually been around um, people who look like myself. Mm. And then there've been times where like someone pointed out once, and I was like in, in this place where we used to have a shared working space and it was like, look around. And then I just looked around. It was like, it's just such a rare experience or at least it has been at certain points in my life mm. to have that in certain aspects. So for me, growing up in, in terms of Oldham, I had that. In Manchester, that's not been an issue. Manchester's more multicultural, but also I've been an, an adult, so I've been able to mix with more people. Um, university, I didn't have that at Cambridge because there wasn't that mix anyway. There might have been a few BAME, but they could have been anyone. <laughs> and then um, Bristol, was, Bristol was nice and mixed. Um, lots, lots and lots of different types of people. And then, yeah, within business as well, like certain aspects of that has been really, really, really specific. I mean, with, with rugby, it's been, there's only, there's only, you've got to think about it. I've been, let's say about seven clubs, I think, or maybe eight clubs, I'm not quite sure. There's only ever been, um, if we're talking about predominantly black here, in the whole of the, the league, there's probably only one team that I'm thinking about. And that's London Scholars, where 90%, because London uh, down there is quite multicultural, um, yeah. are black. And you know what? It was one of the best times. I've had a lot of best times. Uh, I've had a lot of great times uh, in rugby. But, but the whole culture is changed. Like This is why, when it comes to retirement, mm. right? And this is me being honest with, with myself and the people who, who, who watch this, is that with rugby... I was always, I always loved the game. I loved the game, but I never really loved the culture because I never felt yeah. that the rugby culture was for me. Now, yeah. you probably look at, you probably think, well, what is the rugby culture? Um, and it's, I don't, it's probably, I it's probably hard to put in words. I might be stereotyping there, but my perception as an outsider is it is more lad culture. It's obviously yeah. more 
obviously more white male dominated kind of lab culture um quite a bit of drinking yeah um not as not as sensitive to specific issues and yes. awareness of some of those maybe i don't know a lot of a lot of discipline as well i think is one aspect especially from what i've seen with you well, yeah well this is one. why this is why it's split because rugby like i said rugby has changed and given me lots of opportunities throughout my life it's made me it's made me play you know I've, I've, i was fortunate enough to be selected to play in super league granted i didn't play a lot of games but it's moulded me and it's given me discipline and the right attitude towards things. Sport in general is brilliant. But the rugby culture, all this stuff that you're saying is correct. I'm, you know, when you're in a, a white dominated sport, you're only seeing white people. So there is a lot of, a lot of casual racism, which I've never really yeah. been a fan of, uh, you know. But like I said in, in the past, you know, unfortunately, I'll be, I've been in the neighbour sometimes where I've allowed it on, and really I shouldn't. But yeah. I felt like, it's not for me this this i've never really been ingrained in the rugby culture about absolutely everything yeah, living, yeah, yeah. Which I love, at home. yeah i'd love being a professional so when i retired you know a lot of sports people when they in the sport for a while become depressed or feel a certain type of way they miss it i love the game and you know i'd love to play again i probably i might play again do you know what i mean but yeah. i didn't really miss the culture and i think for me that is what made me have the, the break off of I, I'm okay with it um, versus I know people that have retired and really, really struggled have gone into, you know, depression and, and you know, sports yeah, people yeah. like that. You go from there to there. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, the, yeah. the culture's never been massive for me. Um, and I'm not saying that if you're mixed race black that, you know, you're not saying you can't love it. But for me, the, the culture has never been great for me. And it was because of all the casual racism that I've encountered through the years um, and conversations where I've just not been, I just don't get. And again, it might be the rugby culture. Yeah. I, you know, I come from mixed... Have you got any examples? Yeah. Um, you know, it's conversations that... <sighs> I'm trying to think. But you know what? It's one of them where there's been that many, Luke, that you, you just kind of go... Like, it's just... It's, it's these small things where if there's 20... 20 lads in the team and there's three black guys and the three black guys are together. Oh, look, these lot are together. And it, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I was just about to, I was about to ask you before. Yeah. And it's just like, right, okay, so what's, what's the big deal? All the black lads stay together. Mm. Yeah, but I don't, get, I don't get the reason. Like, what, what, what's the reason for that? And there's a lot of casual racism thrown out about words and if mixed race black people have allowed it at clubs. I've always been to a club, right? And say, like, if there is a mixed-race black person that's been there before me who I don't know or is not my friend who allowed these conversations to happen and dropping the N-word and saying these stuff, I've come in and gone, nah, I don't really find that funny. Oh, but Luke finds it funny sort of thing. So and then you're in that little pickle. So I've never really felt that, that, that comfortable. Do you know what I mean? Because I've always felt like yeah. this casual racism sort of always creeps in. And every club, I've always had to at least check one time to go, nah, no, I don't really find that funny to the point where sometimes they might have gone like, oh, you know, Vinny's about thing, like I said before. So I think that's the split for me was was easier than I thought it would be. But I knew the reasons within myself, you know, why. and that's not the reason why I retired, but I suppose when people fall out of love with something, you need to think of what it is you fall in love Because I didn't never fall out with a game and I never will. But you know, what you, what you encounter. I mean, to give you an example of, and again, I don't want to make this about feeling sorry for me at all. I just want to make people aware that this is, you know, a subject, uh, sorry, a thing that does happen. It, it happens if you speak to any of your black friends in, in rugby league about um, having some sort of racism, they'll give you plenty. But there's one that specifically shouts out to me and was in a different country and I've never felt more, what's the word, upset within Serbia, right? Uh, and I know it's in a different country, but the response is great. So we're in Serbia and was on tour. It was uh, Great Britain students we was, right? And it was at Leeds Met. So um, we're there and Serbia has not been great for people of colour. <laughs> so... Um, I think it's going to be, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so the experience, I remember there was three or four mixed, mixed race lads in the squad we walk in, the first encounter we had was walking towards the shop 
And I remember a guy, old guy, maybe in his 50s or something like that, started monkey chanting to black lads. That was right. the first time. And that was shocking to me because I felt like, you know, in a country when you, you know you're foreign, but I felt yeah, like yeah. It was not, we was not wanted. So that was the first thing. So we play a game against Serbia and they all look massive. So we're playing, I'm on the wing, right? So when you're on the ring, you're on, right on the end. And there was a scrum there and I'm waiting. I've got the, I've got the tape somewhere. And all I hear is, hey, nigger. And this was in the crowd. So I'm like, Phew. so throughout the course of that game, and this is only from, I, I was annoyed and angry. Throughout the course of that game, I got called Alibaba, which is creative. Um, you've got to give them sometimes. Um, Alibaba, nigger, blackie, you know, all this sort of stuff in the crowd, right? Now, I was angry. Fortunate enough, I had a great game. I got man in the match, actually, so they actually had to give me the, the award. I had a great game, but I was nice. so annoyed and angry. And this is where, this is with the kicker. So the coach, right? The coach is a brilliant coach, but he, the casual racism that, that, that he said was, I'll give you another example that he said, but I've, I've, everyone's heard this. The physio heard it, and she was like, are you okay? And at the end of the game, shower and stuff and he spoke to me and he says you know um name calling has never hurt me this and this is a white coach white coach it's mm-hmm. name calling has never hurt me you know some people call me fat now you've got to give it to the bloke because he doesn't know this is why I, this is why i'm not angry at him and then yeah, i am yeah, yeah. so i'm split because yeah and one part is he won't know how to handle a a young black uh, a player being racially abused isn't but should it be educated enough to have that conversation so I'll split because you've got black players mm-hmm. in your squad so I was just not initially I was like don't how, how are you going to compare racism to someone being called fat yeah and I didn't say this Luke I just kept my mouth shut and put my head down and then we had conversations with my right. black players in the squad and you know and we had that conversation but it would just, you know, so for rugby, you know, and in terms of casual races and that same coach, there was an instance with another black player who was training and he's tripped up, right? And the, the coach has gone, bloody hell, these lot can't stop breakdancing. This is your head coach, right? Yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. Now, it's funny at the time, but what? Do you know, like, what? Yeah, that's it, yeah, your moral like the moral guidance, like but, the the adult. But this guy, room. Yeah, but what we said before. This is a power. But what we said before is he's a good guy. So if he's a good guy, yeah, can't be racist. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So like, yeah, man. Yeah. They, I mean, there are only a few examples, um, and there's been others as well where, you know. But I mean, if we were to have a, it's not a competition. Do you know what I mean? It's just given. Uh, just giving people content of these things do happen and be aware of them and speak up on it. Like be anti-racist, like say it's not okay because it's more uncomfortable for the person that's getting, who's feeling attacked to say something rather than the person who is white next to you, who's not saying anything. That person's not going to be affected. Yeah. So why don't you say something like it's, I feel like it's your responsibility as a white person. If you're hearing stuff like that to speak up even more, do you know what I mean? Yeah, the mixed race person. That's been an interesting thing with what's going on at the moment. It's like yeah, love it with love it. the people, with the I guess with the core sort of people within the movement, the stronger activists, predominantly black. But yeah. in terms of the entire size, because it's such a big worldwide movement, and the countries that it's in are predominantly white. Yeah, it's predominantly white people who are part of this movement, and yeah. I think I that's love something that. which sets it up, sets it apart from a, a lot of things that we've seen. And I love that. We had a discussion, didn't we, about like you being particularly happy and I have as well when you've seen when it's like you don't have to fight your own battles all the time it's like in the same way that if a woman's getting caught out on something like as a man like it's not right for you to just sit there and just like let her get like sexist abuse yeah, yeah and so it's kind of nice and reassuring that there's so many people in this general coalition white people all as well together. I love it I love yeah. it I, like more specifically white people for me I love I absolutely love seeing there was a protest when it was in uh, um, in London wasn't there and there was all these guys from I don't even want to say the guy's name but the guy who organised everything yeah and um, there was a group of white people 
it was a protester for Black Lives Matter against these white people. And it was going, yeah. you bigger, like we you talking? Brilliant. And I love that. And yeah. I want to encourage it. Um, I think we've, 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 what time is it now? So it's 10 to 9. So what, what do you want to get out of this? What, what, what's your summary? What do you want out of this? I want more people to be able to have these conversations. Like I'm going to continue having them myself. I think there's a lot that we can get from our own individual experiences. Like there's, there's so much just from hearing you speak now mm. that I didn't know, which I think one of the powerful things about what's happening right now is, um, there's a thing, what's it called? What's it in relation to? Um, I can't remember what, I can't remember the relation anyway, but basically it's like individual knowledge and collective knowledge and the power of collective knowledge. Okay. And it's like before, like we got back in touch and started talking about this in the past month. I knew that I encountered racism so consistently within my life and that it was a problem. I knew that you had as well. And I knew that loads and loads of other people had as well. But it's like, we were all there in our different situations, whether you were um, in Warrington at rugby or maybe if I was in Cambridge or even if we were in the same place in Oldham at the same time. Most of the times we've got our own individual experiences of it happening and we sometimes will talk about it. What I like at the moment is that a lot of people, not just who have encountered racism, but like you said, lots of white people as well who have either seen it happen or just know that it happens, we're talking. And everyone's having this conversation and now I know where you stand on this. I know where so many other people stand on this and they know where I stand on this. And it's like we can have this collective knowledge that we've mm. got together, collective understanding, and we can hold each other to account for that as well, so mm. that we can call things out. So I think that's one of the really powerful things. Like for me, I'm gonna continue supporting Black Lives Matter UK and generally. Um, there's the All Black Lives UK, which is the organization um, that I told you about, which I'm really gonna support, because they've got some really, really great aims around education, judicial system, um, health, the reviews that have been, been put in place and that's just something to quickly mention as well like when people are like oh why are you going on about these problems now like it's been going on for so long it's like we've not had these real platform. chances for people yeah, yeah, the platform. nothing's been as and big when, as we have, have, when we have the government has put through dozens and dozens and dozens of its own reviews and recommendations on ways to tackle racism and then they don't get implemented and with, I think it was with, um, with, with the, for the Windrush generation, I think recently in Parliament, although I need to check, they've just started to put through a load of these recommendations that they've made. So it's like, I like at, at the moment, we've all got this collective knowledge, the vast, vast majority of us anyway. It's like, even the main political parties, whether or not they believe in it, like they have to say it. Um, people within the police system, within the judicial system, within, within education have to say it. And the vast majority of the, pop of the population is saying it in this country and across the world. And it's that racism exists, it exists very significantly, and there needs to be something that's done about it. And I think we need to continue having these conversations and make sure that they turn into actions so that it's not just one of those things where, right, we've had that discussion now, let's just go back to things as the way, it, as they were before, because yeah. that's, the, that's the concern that I have for this. It's that once the hashtags have gone, once that initial virtue signaling has gone of people saying, I'm anti-racist, here's my black square, here's my hashtag, <laughs> yeah. it then goes back to normal. But I like the fact that there are a lot of people, especially people, and I respect the fact that there are so many people who haven't gone through this specific struggle themselves, but who are fighting alongside us, who are still going on like after weeks, and it's looking like this is going to continue and continue. And that's what I need. And I think that's just what I'm going to try and take out of it. And I think in terms of the mixed race aspects, for me, I'm going to continue in my own personal journey. Like, I feel like for me, the activism side and the education side and the social change and helping others, that comes very natural to me because I place other people before myself, which might sound like a nice thing, but it's not actually a great thing when you... Mm chronically put other people before yourself. It accounts for things that we've talked about in the past, like me not calling out racism or contributing towards enabling that because it's happened to me, whereas if it was someone else, I haven't. So that's been a good thing for me. Like the change that is happening, I'm fully on board with. I'm gonna keep working hard on that and do what we can. 
Um, but I'm also just going to enjoy this journey and start to learn more. And like, yeah, let's say like go a visit, first visit to Nigeria in the first, in the next few years for the first mm -hmm. time. Like that's something that I'd like to get out of it on a personal level. But collectively, yeah, we need to continue having these discussions and helping each other find new ways in which we can create change that's actually going to last. And All Black Lives UK is an organisation that I'm supporting very strongly at the moment. And I look for anyone else's suggestions on ways that I can help, ways that I can help because, yeah, just need to yeah. carry on. Yeah, great points, man. And I think I second everything that you said. I think, yeah, the cosmetics is really nice. Um, about you know the hashtags and and the yeah. black squares is a funny one because you know all of my feed I'm thinking wow there's a lot of people here that are Black Lives Matter and then the next day it's business as usual so it shows that people like the trend but are you going to follow up with it and it is checking yourself and sometimes it's tough it's tough to check yourself because I don't want to I'm not rich. I'm a racist. And they're the conversations that you want. You want to speak to your partners, your friends, your family, because your family could, you know, be, you know, have them difficult conversations where they don't want to hear it, especially about being mixed race again. You've got a white side who the older generation, for example, they might, act, might be internally racist. My grandson's all right, but the rest of them. Yeah, yeah. And you are in this but you've got a black side as well where they'll never understand about the white side problems. So again, yeah. I think conversations like this, you know, I mentioned about bringing unity. I think conversations like this open up the book and it says to people that look, have these conversations. And actually, you know what, if you find out that this person's got completely the opposite view, you've got two type of people in this world. In, in, in my opinion, you've got one person you present these things to you and you do not want to know good then at least now i know how you feel and then yeah but if i'm presenting yeah. these ideas to you and you've genuinely got no clue or you've been oblivious because of white privilege for example and i'm giving you this information you've took it you've taken it away and gone you know what i'm you know i'm sorry or, or i'm going to do more that's anti-racism and that is what i want and you know what i've had some brilliant messages from some of my, my white friends and some of my rugby friends that have actually personally messaged me yeah, and said, I'm sorry for, you know, for any ca casual racism that's been in the past. And, right, right, right. and a person great. sending that, person sending that is a bigger man. And it takes yeah. a big man and woman, it takes a big man and woman to, to admit to something like that. But that's the first step. And it's about educating oneself. So yeah, definitely. I, I just, I just think that, a black square is all good, yeah, but what are you doing after that which moulds you to are you wanting to change? Are you wanting to be anti-racist? Anti don't be quiet. Don't be silent because for me that speaks volumes. Businesses that are not saying anything, you're only saying one thing for me because that means you're not being anti-racist. You're just being, I don't want to get involved with that. That means you're comfortable with the current situation, which we know from statistically it's not right and it's not equal. Yeah. Black Lives Matter is just about one thing quality so when all this other stuff like the quality is fighting for basic equality and that's it so yeah. i suppose it's a great conversation that we've had and i just want to say thank you man for um you know for having this conversation because not everyone can have these have these conversations um hopefully when mix goes out um people might reflect on themselves um and then yeah. i suppose the next time when we get on who knows uh you could feature on another episode, Luke. Are you down for that? I'm down for that. Yeah, I just <laughs> want to say, man, thanks. I really appreciate it. It's been great. And, like, the opportunity to be able to discuss this is, is amazing. And with yourself as well, obviously, we've got that relationship with, but who can be open themselves. And one of the things that you said, which I think is really important, is check yourself. And when it comes to this, being mixed race, when it comes to your personal identity and what your experience is as a result of being multiracial, it's a very, very, very unique experience. Mm -hmm. I think that everyone who's watching can see themselves as mixed when it comes to being right or wrong or whether they see themselves as being good or bad people or whether or not they see themselves as being racist or not. So check yourselves on the way that you're not doing things right because we all do things wrong in some ways. Exactly. And part of our mutual growth is us acknowledging that and growing together. But we can't just put the blame on other people and then just wash our hands with it. Like, I take responsibility for the things I do, and I'll do more and more to do that continually. 
and I hope everyone else can as well. Yeah, cool, man. Cool.